guys, so today is a rest day for myself and Connor. Um, we are currently about to go on our regular coffee run. So, so we're... come along with us. <laughs> So outside of fitness, I think Connor's pride and joy is definitely not me anyway, it's the car. <laughs> he has like a small obsession with his car, but to be fair, it's new, so you love it, don't you? Yeah, it's just like my little kind of therapy outside of, uh, outside of work in the gym, because I suppose, seeing as I work in fitness and then my own training, so my car is just like my, it's like people like with gardening or something, it's like my, my own little hobby. His therapy, yeah. yeah and I think the funny thing is because we live in the city, we're like never really in the car, so there's always a fight as to who's going to drive the yeah. car, isn't there? Literally a fight. And we, because we both, we both really enjoy driving, so oftentimes we'll actually be going to the gym at the same time, but we'll actually drive separately. So quite strange. We, <laughs> <laughs> we see a lot of people like obviously driving together, which is a smart thing to do, uh, but I'll like show up to the gym and two minutes later, Kay will rock up. But people always wonder, they're like, he lives together and you only live like three minutes from the gym like why do you both drive separately now you know why because it's like a rare occasion that we get to drive like once a day because we work yeah. from home we're always at home so it's like our escape really yes um at the moment we're currently tidying up a little bit before we go into prep we will talk about that a little bit more maybe further on in the next few weeks i'll tell you a little bit more about what we're doing but um i think at the moment we're going out fasted in the morning and it's dark, um, but it's like the best time to go out, isn't it? Because it's like really peaceful. Yeah, I, I definitely think um, something for people who are kind of like working uh, from home and stuff, it's just like having, or e e not even working from home, any type of work. It's just kind of serving yourself first in the morning. So that's yeah. something I used to be kind of bad for. I like get kind of like trapped um, to work straight away in the morning. If I saw like my inbox was full or whatever, I want to get like straight to it. Um, but having that kind of like peace of mind in the morning where you like look after yourself, you do something that's kind of on your to-do list for the day uh, before starting work can be like really helpful and kind of sets your mind up a lot better for the day then mm -hmm. and your work will actually be a lot more productive so I think before like I'd if I started work my activity could actually take such a major hit but I'd find it very hard to actually step away and mm -hmm. um, whereas when I do I um, actually give it a bit of chance and uh, it is helpful. Also, town is very busy in Lockton. It's so busy. Like this is like, um, obviously for anyone who doesn't know, like Ireland is in its second lockdown, but it's like not the same as the last lockdown. There's like people everywhere still, so it's kind of weird, isn't it? Mm. But it makes you feel like it's normal, which is nice as well. Yeah. So the coffee that we got is obviously our favorite. Um, Soma is definitely one of the nicest coffee shops in Cork, to be honest. So we actually just found out they had one right by our apartment. Yeah, there's there's a, a number two, and it's literally across the road from our apartment. We found this out two days ago, and we've but, been there. But we feel kind of we feel we have some loyalty to. We have loyalty to the one in the in the main city. So, um, I think a big thing for us, like um, especially not even just on a daily basis anyway, it's nice to get out and move around anyway, especially on a rest day. So, um, we do like to go to Soma when we walk into town. Um, but it's definitely one of the nicest coffee shops. Usually what we get is uh, an Americano with a dash of coconut milk. Don't have to try it, it's so tasty. Yeah, coconut milk doesn't sound nice. But it is actually lovely. We I prefer to them, but they're like not, not coconut milk and then they try it and they're like, oh, that's actually lovely. And if you're not a coconut lover, like it doesn't actually taste like intense coconut. It just gives it, the coffee a little bit of a sweet flavor. So give it a try. I feel like I always finish my coffee on the way home as well. And I feel you just- you finish it? Yeah, and you always just, well, almost finish it. And then you always just wait to enjoy it when you're at home. It's like the same with anything really, isn't it? Yeah, I just want can't, like when I'm walking and stuff or when I'm in the car I like to drink my coffee but Connor will wait until he's at home nice and calm to just enjoy the coffee. I feel like I'm not a big multitasker. You're not a multitasker. That You are correct in that. Definitely not. Actually like eating and drinking when you drive is actually very challenging. That is true actually. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but I mean even just walking and stuff you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Walking and drinking as well is challenging. <laughs> Maybe that's you bring it up. It's a big challenge for you. 
Okay, so I have like a big habit of lighting candles everywhere and it's, I don't know why it's just a habit and I really like scents, like when the place smells really good, but I think Connor is used to having them like late in the evening. So when I put them on during the day, he's like, it's literally not nighttime, like why are you lighting candles? But like sometimes I'll just, I'll light them at like 8, 9 a.m. because why not? Like who doesn't love candles? Any girl watching this will appreciate that, so yeah. Okay, so basically what I'm just doing is just dividing mints for today and for tomorrow. Um, okay, so for a big thing for me, um, I'm just gonna cook mince and veg, right? I think a lot of people, when they're dieting or just in general, like say if you have a set meal plan and you're eating mince and veg, people will just have a tendency to slap the mince together. It's not appealing. Like who wants to have frozen veg from the microwave and just mince thrown on a pan? Like I definitely wouldn't wanna eat that, would you? I don't know, maybe you would. Um, but I definitely feel like a big thing for me is like present presentation and actually enjoying the meal especially when you're in a calorie deficit like you want to look forward to every single meal and just because it's mince and veg doesn't mean it can't be tasty so I'm going to talk you through and just show you how I cook mince and veg and just make it tasty adding in different herbs and spices as well to flavor it up and just get creative with the meals so um basically with this um with the mince obviously I have a bunch of cooker so with the mince I think a big thing here as well is the fact that um people will put oil in or put like one can spray in but you don't need to with mince because it will cook in its own fat um so just be mindful of that as well and I also have a weird fixation with um grounding the mince so what I'll do is like I'll chop it all up first and then when mince is stringy it actually turns my stomach like when I see like long strings of mince like oh I honestly can't take that at all um but what I will do is um I'll ground up the mince with a fork um I'll show you how to do that now um you just have to really watch over the mince while it's cooking but just while the pan's heating up um I will leave it there I'll also show you the veg I am going to use so okay so onion garlic personal preference of course like you can use whatever you like peppers like who doesn't love peppers and fresh coriander I am a massive fan of fresh herbs um if you've followed any of my own preps before and um, when I am meal prepping or show snippets of it fresh herbs are honestly the best so um I'll talk you through a little bit on what I use but it's very basic like you can you can use whatever veg you want like personal preference like you don't have to use what I'm using but I'll just show you how I flavor my mince obviously massive disclaimer here I'm not a chef <laughs> so I'm not a chef I don't claim that I am a professional at cooking at all but I do know how to make a meal tasty and I'm pretty confident in my ability to do that with with very little so this is why I'm showing you and I like to chop the onion up like super small I always get nervous chopping garlic so I feel like I'm gonna like cut my hand off Obviously wash your veg too, even though it's in like plastic, like still wash it, you don't know what's been going on there, you know. Okay, so garlic, onion, move it to the side. As I'm only making like one portion, so I do need to go back obviously and touch up on my mince. So what I meant by like, like kind of grinding down that mince is like I'll like press the fork into, into it. Um, probably doesn't look like the most appealing thing in the world but I will like mash the mince down I think that is probably the correct terminology for it whatever um, but yeah I'll like gr really grind it down so I'll go back to it in a minute again when it's like a little bit when it's cooked a little bit more but I just really like to make sure that I get out all those like kind of long stringy bits like it's just like I said it doesn't appeal to me at all so I would rather take my time in like basically mashing up my mince than looking at that. Okay, so pepper, it's only one portion of mince. So I will usually just use like one side of the pepper and obviously different colors, they taste differently. So I like to have a blend of all three. And I'll chop up the pepper a little bit thicker because when you cook it, it kind of, it gets smaller. So again, personal preference on what you rather. 
and then I'll just take out some of the coriander so I'll take off like quite a good bit of the leaves because um is that what you call them yeah I take off a good bit of the coriander here because I do like a strong flavor of it in any of my meals I'd have it with chicken turkey I'd have it with anything like I'm slight obsession with coriander so yeah And Connor actually has a tendency to like lob things together, whereas I like to really focus on like flavor and preparation. So when I do make something, and if I make it for both of us, he always is delighted because it tastes way better. <laughs> I will take credit for that, to be honest. It's it's one thing I'm better at than Connor is <laughs> is prepping food. <laughs> so I will run with that. Stringy bits guys, this is like the best part when I can see that they're all gone. Actually really makes my day. So now it's ready for flavour. So what I'll do is I will put the onion and the garlic in first with the coriander. So I'll mix that all around. And like a big thing for me, like I said, is flavour. So I let that sit for a little bit before I add in anything else. Um, with the her uh, the herbs and spices I put in, I'll add in last. But I don't know why I do it this way. There's no uh, main reason behind it. I just feel like it just adds more flavour because it's sitting longer while it's cooking. Herbs to use is your personal preference. Um, mine is just pretty much pretty basic parsley, Cajun seasoning. That's about as exciting as it gets. But again, your flavor will come from the garlic, the onion, um, the fresh coriander. So you don't need to be overdoing it essentially on like spices. Because again, like depending on the, the spices that you have, of course they contain calories as well. Like, so just be mindful of that, especially when you're dieting. I don't like to get too reliant on them. I more like to focus on uh, fresh herbs and spices to flavor the meals. So for the parsley, in it goes, a bit heavy handed on that, but I like the colour of it, personally. And then in for your Cajun, so. And then I'll just stir that all in. So that is pretty much it. This is not for now, it's for later, but I obviously like to be overly prepared because uh, when you're doing things throughout the day, like you don't really want to be sitting over the cooker forever. So nice and quick. And there you go, mince some veg. So the spring shows are coming up sooner than we actually expected. Dates have been set for a lot of our competitors already. Usually um, they would be more towards April, May, and there's still going to be shows around that time. But a lot of our athletes are going to be competing in March, which is a little bit unusual. It's there. It's the first time that we've seen dates come this early on for specific shows, especially in Ireland. So a lot of them are easing themselves into prep now, which is definitely exciting as it's something to look forward to, especially with the year that we've had. So I think a big thing for myself and Connor is we don't just focus on the training and the nutrition it's all variables and I think that's one good thing as well about having a male and female as a coach I will do posing analysis as part of the prep package every week so what it actually entails is they will do a regular session with me first and then depending on what we've done within that week I will assess every single week until their next session with me then so I'll be able to focus on um, assessing their mandatories their quarter turns focusing on their T walk or I walk depending on the show and make the necessary adjustments needed or critique that they need um, in order to push forward for the week ahead so that they're not getting any bad habits until the next time I get to see them either via Zoom for international clients or in person for clients that I get to meet here. So that is a huge part of our coaching because you must remember 
yes, it's great to have an incredible physique and go to stage feeling confident in your ability to get up there, but you're not able to showcase it then. You're not confident in your posing and you haven't given one of the most essential parts of prep time. So if you are someone out there who hasn't been really valuing the importance of posing, I would highly recommend that you start now, especially if you're taking to stage for the first time in spring. So yeah. So I'm now actually going to go through one of our UK clients. Um, she has just checked in today, so I'm just gonna go through her posing now. The big thing as well is your feet. So when you're standing in that fixed position, remember these are mandatory poses, so you must execute them properly. Your feet, you must make sure that they are at 10 and two. So we're not seeing that sweep when your legs are straight in front in that pose. So just make sure that you have a little bit of a turnout on both feet and their shoulder width apart. Other than that, I think the upper body was excellent. I think the way that you're arching into it, rotating your pelvis back and I think the look is excellent from the front um, so overall I think everything else was really well put together just um, I think the main focus for me were just those small corrections is don't look down make sure that when you are walking that there's no gap in between the legs it's a lot more powerful don't rush it keep it nice and slow um, as well from the side pose that you don't have a gap between the leg that is really important that you keep both feet together and they're facing directly to the side so you don't want them at an angle where they're almost turning to the front and then we're losing that shape of that little hamstring hang that you have from the side so just be mindful of those small things but overall I think you did really well this week well done and um, so just moving on to um, the title of the video now which is the most effective approach to building muscle and um, so this is an area we wanted to talk about this week as we feel uh, for certain people it can almost be a misconception of what it really takes to put on muscle and um, there may be people who want to do like an eight week gaining phase or a 10 week gaining phase and think that they'll see the results that they want uh, but oftentimes that isn't going to be enough for them and their goals and um, it's just really understanding like what you actually need Need to do uh, in order to develop as an individual for myself personally like i'll tell you for when i competed in 2018 uh, i competed in november of 2018 i then took um, the whole year off to compete again in november of 2019 and um, so that's essentially nine months of growing uh, with like a three month prep um, and i wasn't happy with the changes that i made to my physique i felt i didn't put on enough muscle in that time period so that's why this year i've actually taken an extended amount of time in so that just goes to show what actually it takes to really make changes to your physique. I took a full year until I did another show and I still looked at pictures and said, I probably needed more time to actually put on muscle. And I was doing everything right, I was ticking all the boxes, so it really just goes to show um, exactly what it takes. So starting off, I think the first thing to talk about is mindset. Um, I think a lot of people won't last long in a gaining phase just because it can be quite mundane to people. Um, it's very, um, just doing the same things day in, day out. Um, like the people who are most consistent, they're the people who will definitely um, strive and succeed the most in a phase like this. Um, and just people's need for instant gratification. I think when you're doing a cutting phase, when you're doing a prep, um, the amount of gratification you'll get from other people, uh, seeing the daily changes in yourself, it's very, very easy to stick to. It's exciting and um, it's um, things that you like to hear. And um, as well, on like you can see on social media, if someone's do doing a prep, the amount of kind of support or interaction they'll get is quite high. So for an individual to have all that kind of interaction and then move to gaining phase where they may feel a lot of it goes, and um, it can be quite hard to um, deal with. And you might find, geez, I just want to diet down again. I almost want that gratification again. So really stepping yourself away from that and understanding what do you truly want? Do you want instant gratification from people that is quite meaningless? Or do you really, really want to develop a physique that you're going to be truly proud of and truly happy with? So it's trying to, from a mindset point of view, detach from that kind of feeling of needing people's kind of approval and just getting to a stage where you're happy, you're confident in yourself that you don't really care how you're going to look because you know at the end of the day, you're putting in the work for the next time that you cut down or the next time that you prep, that your physique is going to be so much better. So it's keeping that in mind for the last um, 12 months that I haven't, uh, since I competed, like my physique um, hasn't been treaded. I haven't been like a rip look that you'd see of my competition uh, photos, but it literally doesn't bother me at all. And the reason behind it is because my true goal, my true passion is beating that previous physique that I did. So the fact that I have more body fat now, I don't look as good as my pictures back then. None of that bears any kind of meaning to my uh, mentality and my happiness because at the end of the day, I am so like involved in everything that I do. That's all that matters to me. And um, so that's a big thing. And that's one of the main things that I would uh, take on board. 
months. Next would be progressive overload. So we're, uh, progressive overload with both training and nutrition. So what do I actually mean by that? So progressive overload with your training is just going to be making sure that you're getting better, you're improving every session that you do. A lot of people may get bored of the type of training they'll do and they say they're going to do one lower volume session, one higher volume session, and it goes back and forth and they're just kind of trying to almost say like, oh, I'm getting a bit bored with my training, so I like to switch it up. If that's okay, if you're a lifestyle person and you just want to go in and that's what you want to do, that's perfectly fine to have that mentality. But if your goal is true development and just the uh, benefits of staying meticulous with the plan that you have and striving to get a really, really strong on the movements that you do is going to be so important. So with regards to the training plan, sticking with the same training plan you have, sticking with the same exercises you have and getting really, really uh, strong at those movements is gonna pay so much dividends to you and your progress. So it gets quite hard, don't get me wrong. If you've been on a hack squat machine and you've been doing it for months and months on end, there's gonna be numbers in there and you have to go on that and it's not gonna be comfortable for you. You're gonna feel quite nervous about the sets that you do and it'll be much easier for you to say, hmm, I actually might give the leg press to go today. Um, and it's the people who don't do that who uh, uh, ignore that voice in their head saying, ah, maybe do a different workout today. You don't have to kind of progress. The leg press will still be tough. It's the people who say, no, I have a hack squat, I have numbers to beat and they do that and they do that with all their sessions every day. That's, they're the people who are really, really gonna progress. So progressive overload with your training, very, very important. Also progressive overload with your food. So food is a huge thing. Don't just feel like uh, I'm eating enough and um, I feel full during the day. I'm sure it's grand. I'm sure I'm eating enough to grow. You have to be meticulous with the amount of food you're having, making sure that you are having enough to be growing muscle and progressing with those numbers as the time goes on. If you're eating 3,000 calories now and 3,000 calories still in February in four months time, um, there's a good chance that you should be at a higher amount of calories there, but you may be comfortable at this 3,000 calorie max. So that's an important thing. It's not about being comfortable. It's about doing what's necessary to make the changes that you need. So always looking at your feedback. Is weight going up? How's the visual looking? How's your appetite and digestion? Yeah, I'm not saying put crazy amount of calories in because that's definitely wrong as well, but it's making sure that you're progressing with your calories at the right time. So progressing with your training, progressing with your nutrition, both of those are really, really important. A big thing as well is patience. So with regards to a fat loss phase, you'll see changes in yourself quite often um, and it'll be great because you're like, oh, I'm making changes. When you're in a gaining phase, there's gonna be a lot less of that. There could actually be points where you feel you're actually looking worse. So it's just saying to yourself, I need to be patient. I'm doing everything I'm meant to be doing. I'm training really hard. I'm eating the right quantities of food. I'm sleeping, I'm recovering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you can say you're doing all that, I want you to detach from everything else. Detach from the visual of how you look. Detach from the thoughts going on inside your head, saying you're looking worse, looking too much at yourself in the mirror. Because uh, obviously it's not going to be what you want um, a, a, in compared to when you're leaner and you're in a dieting phase. So that's really important. Just being patient that the process that you're in takes a lot more work and you're not going to really see the changes. And keeping in mind, okay, right now, um, I don't see the changes necessary, but I know the next time I cut down, I'm gonna have those bigger quads that I wanted. My chest is gonna look more developed than it did the last time, etc. And it's trying to have that sort of mindset instead of how you look right at this moment. And for some people, that can be quite tough to do. And a lot of times those individuals are gonna look quite similar year after year because they don't detach enough to allow them to um, put on enough muscle in a gaining phase where the people who can really detach away from it and, and really just get involved with the process of uh, what a growing season is, they're gonna see really, really good progress. And the funny thing about it is, the people who aren't patient will actually look at those people in a few years time in admiration saying, wow, look at the changes they made. I really want to do that. But it's just a mental block from them, not allowing them to do it. So big thing on kind of patience is just for you to be process driven over outcome driven. So when we're dieting, there's a big outcome factor. I'm going to look uh, a certain way by the time of my holidays, by the time of my show, by the time of my photo shoot. When we're in a gaining phase, there's not really that end date as such. So it's much more being process driven. What are you doing day to day? Are you ticking the boxes with your logbook? Are you getting in all your food, etc., etc. If you fall in love with just caring about that, then the outcome will take care of itself. So that's a very, very important part. So I think that's mostly it. 
not looking for instant gratification, uh, progressive overload with your training and your nutrition, and um, consistency obviously day to day, and just having a lot of patience with the process. So if you can nail all those elements, and um, trust me, you're gonna grow muscle. So it's using those kind of tips um, and kind of detaching yourself from the thought of being lean or the thought of needing to do a prep all the time and taking some time away. And trust me, when you come back, you'll definitely make enough noise with your physique and the time away will have been worthwhile. So I hope what I said with regards to a gaining phase has resonated with you and now you can see it in a different outlook and also have different expectations on what to really expect from one. Uh, if you do have any uh, questions on anything I mentioned, uh, do please drop them in the comments below and thank you for watching.